I'm Sophia Hernandez in South Florida, where archaeologists are uncovering clues into our state's history to help us better learn about our ancestors and better protect our future. I tell people it's underwater basket weaving, but it's a bit more complicated than that. Josh Moreno is a maritime archaeologist for South Florida National Parks. His love for discovery started with a map of a shipwreck, and 12 years later, he was on a boat working on what would become just one of dozens of archaeological findings. Uh, the, the old cliche, right, is if you, if you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat it. It's a saying Moreno uses cautiously, but it's got truth. He is part of a small niche field called marine or underwater archaeology. In Florida, that's comprised roughly of a dozen others. Moreno's coverage area is 172,000 acres, 95% of it underwater, and it's called Biscayne Bay. Biscayne National Park is home to 170 archaeological sites. It's a window into who our ancestors were and the challenges they faced. One of the biggest ones, sea level rise. People were cognizant of where the land and the water met. It was, it was a very much a big part of their life where that interaction occurred. Much like today, our ancestors, dating back at least 10,000 years ago, tried to harden their resources. We have a, a Native American site here in the park that they actually utilized shell tools to build riprap, if you will. So they actually fortified their own shoreline a thousand years ago. And because of that, the shoreline of that site is pretty, uh, it's actually pretty well intact. But the threat of water has made it harder to find these sites and their strategies. They're, they're imperiled. And a lot of the sites, because the necessity to be within close proximity to water, they're right along the shoreline, if not underneath the water now. And so we're, we're kind of in a race against time where we're having to prioritize our sites and learn what we can while we can, um, and then decide which sites can we save and which sites you know, maybe are already lost. It's a sad reality. Even preserved landmarks like Boca Chita Key, which is barely above sea level, is seeing what those thousands of years ago faced. When we talk about our septic systems, our water lines, how we actually get amenities out here, there's been a lot of challenges, and that's really been exacerbated the last few years with uh, some of these major storm events. Hurricane Irma in 2017, Hurricane Ian uh, just a few years ago. Construction is ongoing to repair these historic structures, but also make them more storm resilient. But the real task is learning to adapt. That's the interesting thing with history is people have always been adapting to what is occurring in South Florida, whether it's the extreme heat, whether it's the mosquitoes uh, and the diseases that they carry, whether it's hurricanes, we have always worked to adapt. And so what's interesting is, at least from an archaeologist or an anthropologist perspective, is how those people back then reacted to those threats and how we're doing similar work now. Take this boardwalk that's now partially submerged after Hurricane Andrew, the new one already seeing signs of erosion. A few miles offshore, Moreno takes us to a site where they found a ship anchor from a ship called St. Lucie that wrecked and killed 26 people during a hurricane in 1906. It's an example of artifacts that not only give insight into how we've adapted to climate change, but our state's history. That anchor kind of provides a, a concrete connection not only to that particular event, that shipwreck, those 26 people, but they were workers for Henry Flagler's Railroad. So there were people actually being transited down the Keys to work on the railroad down there, basically building Miami, enabling Miami to become the city that it was. A few weeks ago, Moreno also found a graveyard of a yellow fever hospital near the Dry Tortugas, roughly 60 graves on a submerged island, a testament to the effects of climate change and a picture of a moment in history. The water and the clues lying both above and below it are an indicator of a pattern that's been happening for centuries, one that today Florida has put millions of dollars towards improving seawalls, coastlines and infrastructure. For those in the field, they say there's no telling how much is still out there to explore. But the more they find, the more answers and possible solutions to help generations today continue to thrive. They won't protect what they don't care about. They won't care about what they won't know about. And so that's really my job here and the job of the Park Service in South Florida from a cultural perspective is to convey these stories. It's not necessarily for us to, to interpret or, or modify, but to document history out here and convey that to the public and get people to care about their local history right here in South Florida. Sophia Hernandez, Florida 24 Network.